Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I am Pat, the P in JMPR Gaming, and I am with... Matt, the M. And this is MPC on MCP, episode two. You and did I did, thank you, thank you. And today, what we're going to be doing is looking at what do I buy next? So... Um, we sort of touched upon the core set a little bit last week. I think most people getting into this game, we can agree the core set is just a must buy. It's so much value for money. You get two pretty decent affiliation or starts to affiliations. Um, but today we're going to be looking at what do I buy next? And I'm taking the role of the good guys in general. And we've got Matt, who is um, the villain of the piece. The villain of the piece, exactly. So. so What's been going on in MCP this week for you? Uh, I finished Saber 2 from Wolverine. Very good. So I am I back to having... Know. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, I, I, I'm back to having every character painted until the Inhumans drop uh, next week. Oh, that's looking good. That's looking I'm good. good. Angela, started, on, looking good started on Angela. Um, but slight faux pas here. Um, just before we came on 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 live, I, I I was moving some models around in my cupboard because the marble shelf is now too big for just one shelf in the display <laughs> cabinet. So I thought I'll rearrange, I'll move some of my Lord of the Rings models, uh, I'll, and then I'll move my Titanicus over, and then I'll have a second shelf of marble next to each other. Uh, as I was moving some of the Lord of the Rings models, I dropped one of the metal ones onto a fine cast model, and his sword broke. And I was like, it's no problem, it's easy, easy fix, easy fix. Got my super glue, got my activator spray. Now. I'm trying to hold this fine sword on the model and hold the activator spray. And so I'm down on the desk, like real close. <laughs> so I've, I've dabbed a bit of super glue on, I'm holding the sword there and I'm really focusing to make sure that sword is in the right place. Yep. And I pull the trigger on the activator spray and it goes straight in my eye because <laughs> it was not pointing the right way. Oh no. This was like three minutes ago. My eye is not feeling great. Oh. Um, and just a little heads up, both of us work in the eye department, like in... Oh yeah, we are, we are both uh, slightly yeah, differently like, qualified opticians. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I've got loads of eye drops, so I've got some eye drops in, and it's feeling it's not feeling too bad, but... Um, I hope you rinsed it out, Matt. I did rinse, I did rinse, I rinsed and dropped, but this definitely says do not get it in your eyes. So it um, causes serious eye irritation, is what it says wow. on this bottle. And literally, it was like, it was as close as you could get, because I was really concentrating on the model, straight in my open eye. So, um... The most important question, though, Matt, is, is the sword glued to the uh, model again? No! No, it isn't, because I dropped it, obviously, as soon as I sprayed it in my eye. <laughs> I'll let you off, I'll let you off. So, um, I, w I will fix that later. Um, it's not urgent. But yeah, that was that was, that was was my little faux pas a minute ago. Can you, can you see out of that eye okay? Yeah, I'm probably still 6'9", which is nice. <laughs> which is what I normally am. Um, so yeah, the vision's fine. It's a little bit, it feels a bit weird, but um, nice. other than that, uh, Saber Tooth and Wolverine are finished. Um, Very nice. Them, like a, you're not yesterday, day before. Mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah, it's a quick cool. it's it's a quick and easy easy paint job. But they look fine. They'll look fine on the tabletop, which is what I always go for. Um, they look better. Than they look better than that. They look fine. They look fine. Um, but so pretty happy with those back up to fully painted can't wait for the inhumans uh what we, we we're guessing like 10 days time ish two yeah weeks i think ago. i think i think we think it's two weeks so that's pretty cool um, um being pretty quiet on my front i just managed to pick up um finally managed to get land to picking up uh, okoye and shuri oh. so, um, i wasn't going to get them beforehand but now that i fall in love with a force they seem like a shoe in so Hmm. I, I get the joys of putting together Shuri's head, so... Um, oh yeah, and her gloves. Don't forget her gloves are separate pieces. Yeah, okay. I haven't even looked at it, to be honest. Uh, the, I've been put off. The, the jaws and her gloves are separate pieces, um, just so you know. Well, I'll make use of the needle then on the plastic super glue I have. You will need it, awesome. awesome. Well, do you want to get cracking with our today's subject? 
Which is yeah, um, so we'll go into what by that. Now, uh, I, would, I would just like to point out that we did this in a way that it's more if you wanted to go into a specific um, affiliation or, you know, not, not affiliation, but a specific um, good guy or bad guy theme. Um, so there are many ways you could do this. Um, and um, we'll probably discuss a couple of other options as well. But this was our thoughts. If we could go back, know what we know now, and then sort of start rebuying stuff. Um, this is what we would do. Yeah. Um, this is what we, we like to play with. Yes, um, absolutely. This is completely and biased. I think a quick heads up as well. Like there are obviously powerful characters in this game. You have your Modox, you have your Thors, you have, you know, your she hawks just come out. But I think you can win with just about anything in this game. Okay. So really play what you like. Um, and that's basically what I've been doing. So I'm just maining one faction at the moment. And I'm just trying to get as many games in with that. And I think you're doing something similar where you've got your dual affiliation. So yeah, um, pretty, pretty similar. It's varying it slightly, but but very much sticking to the, the one theme as the core. Yeah, and I think that's cool. So basically, what you get in the starter set is you get um, a load of characters. You get scenery. Um, you get enough cards and crisis and in the crises and the tactics to have a perfectly good you know handful of games and we did that we we had a good couple of games with only the core box set before absolutely adding in extra ones so you get the like you get your two leaders you get your red skull and captain america um and then you basically get an affiliation around them so you get the cabal the red skull and you get the avengers with captain america so that's what i sort of took as a starting point when i was like oh what do we what do we buy next um and for me, I think the best, maybe not the best value, but you're going to get a lot of legs out of this box set. It's CP11, which is Thor and Valkyrie. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause you right there, Pat, and I'm just going to bring it up on the screen for everyone to see. Awesome. Awesome. Perfect. Right. Look at that. So hopefully you can see that now. Yep, looks good to me. Um, so yeah, what we've got here is Thor and Valkyrie. Now they came in a double pack. Um, quite a lot of the characters come in a double pack. You'll notice that in Marvel Crisis Protocol. It's 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 cool. Um, and with the box set, I think the main reason I went for this box set is you get Thor, who is leader of a second affiliation, um, and then you get Valkyrie, who's a member of said affiliation as well. So. With only those two, it might it, it probably will be tricky to build an Avenger, uh, an Asgard roster. Sorry, but you get all the the starts. Like you basically get a good starting block for what you need for it. Um, you also get a crisis in this box set, and that was one of the things I looked at in particular was trying to get as much value out of these boxes as possible. Um, so getting an extra crisis means there's an extra way of playing, just adds you know much more variety to your games less likely that every game you play you'll get the same missions and it's a really good one as well it's one that i try and play quite a lot um fear grips the world is you know the worthy whatever everyone calls it as hammers um it's hammers it's hammers yeah uh, it's a really fun crisis um mainly because it gives you extra dice on your attacks and rolling more dice is usually the way to go not always but, but who doesn't usually... want a character with four extra <laughs> dice on their attacks Basically, that happened to me the other day with She-Hulk, and it was brilliant. Um, but not only do you get this really fun crisis, you also get two tactics cards. Um, one is Thunder Wave, which I don't believe sees as much play as, um, as, as you might think when you've got uh, Avengers and Thor on the same team. I mean, I have played it before. It is, it is it's pretty good when it goes off. But the reason you really want this box is for Odin's Blessing. Now, Odin's Blessing is a fantastic Asgard affiliation tactics card. Um, you basically get to respond to being attacked. So it's after all the damage is decided, you can say, no, 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 no. I'm going to um, spend some power here and reduce that damage to one. So it's, yeah, it really does save your bacon quite a lot. Um, and if you wanted to play Asgard, which... I don't think I'm going too far out of the realms of the truth here and saying it's probably up there as the stronger of the factions that are out at the moment. Mainly it definitely, it's definitely very popular, certainly uh, in the league. It's one of the highest yeah. played. 
And it's mainly Flaxons. because you get really powerful characters, you get access to more um, power on your turn because the Asgardian special rule, instead of getting just the one power, you get the two power a turn. Um, and also they're pretty good at the whole hide muscle play, which um, you know, the less we speak about the better. But um, <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's a really good value box. Um, like I said, it opens up that second affiliation and, you know, Thor come, Thor is an adventure. You can play Thor and Avengers, and he's a brilliant Avenger as well. Getting the oh, yeah. his special abilities is is very tasty. So um, that was my go-to first purchase. Um, for next one, now we had to wait a little while for it, even though technically I think Spider-Man and uh, Ghost Spider, or Spider-Gwen as she'll always be known to me, um, CP10, so should have actually come out before Thor and Valkyrie, but didn't come out until quite a little bit later some production issues but oh was it worth the wait i really i really like this uh, affiliation and it opens up the web warriors with miles as the leader um and obviously you get uh spider-man uh, peter parker in the core box set so you can you, you've got the good starts of the web warriors affiliation there um, with ghost spider appearing in quite a lot of rosters even as an unaffiliated character for her ability to save other um, fighters and she's a, a speedy character as well they both are um, so yeah it gives you access to another affiliation which I think is always good more diff more ways of playing with regards to leadership abilities and um, generally I think web warriors play on a slightly different axis to both Asgard and Avengers so really is just giving you as many options here as possible um, much like the Thor and Valkyrie box set, um, the Spider-Man Wiles and Spider-Gwen box set does come with a um, Crisis card. So this is the Portals car, um, Crisis, which is another really fun one. Um, you know, I think we've had a couple of good games with this one, um, trying to uh, get the spider infected. I think it's, is it spider infected Portals? I, I, I can't quite remember. Um, um, it doesn't matter. It's, 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 <laughs> It's, it's a good one. Um, yeah, it is Spider People. It's not Spider Infected, it's Spider People. Spider People, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it is the one which I was thinking about on the D map, so it's another... It's the ones where they, if you have hold of them, they make you run around, isn't it? Potentially. Yeah, you basically can vanish um, and appear two, two away from something else. So. Oh, I thought it was the one that makes them... makes your opponent get to move you short, not the push one. Uh, no, this, this one is the... You, you're placed within two of the current position. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's good. It's good. I, I, I think it's got a decent um, amount of play. It's another mm -hmm. D map, so like Hammers, um, I think we're opening up more uh, deployment options with regards to the missions. Um, and it also comes with three tactics cards, this box set. So you get all webbed up, all you've got in Web Warrior, which are three really quite controlly sort of cards. Um, I think in particular, uh, all you've got is um, one that doesn't see as much play, or doesn't you know doesn't always see a lot of play. But when it does, it will really catch you off guard. This is the one where you can spend four power, and um, they just don't gain an activated token. But then they they they're dazed if they're healthy or KO'd if they're injured. So it's a bit of a risk, but a um, very powerful card. That um, I think it's I've definitely more. come up against it a lot in the league. Yeah, I think it's it's seeing more play. Um, and then all webbed up and web barrier two sort of um, uh, web warrior affiliation cards, which are good as well. I can't profess to have played them that much. They're a, an affiliation I want to play, but really since A-Force have come out, um, they've 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 been the, uh, the jewel in my jewel in my eye, you know, the ones that I want to be playing most of the time. Um, and funnily enough, keeping in trend, the third box that I've gone for here um, is another leader box. So we've got CP23 with Doctor Strange and Wong. Now, um, Doctor Strange is a really powerful car, uh, really powerful character. He's a, a leader again. So basically what I've done with these first three box sets is open up these affiliations for, for you. you know, the more affiliations you have, the more different styles of playing, you know, you can find that niche that you like to play in. And I think Defenders are another really powerful affiliation. Um, it's a really good box set. You get Wong, who's a, a two threat character. So 
much like the Black Widow that you get in the um, core set. You've now got a couple of twos, which really opens up roster building as well. And not only this, but it's the first box um, that I got anyway that had one of the gems. So you get the soul gem with this one. Um, which is a good gem with Doctor Strange, you know, he is he can use it. I think it's I think it's better than the time gem for him. Um Agreed. and yeah, I think I think it's a, a really really good box set and you know you effectively get three three characters in it if you count the soul gem as one. Yes, you need a character to take the soul gem, but there are a few few different characters you can, Doctor Strange being one. You also get another uh crisis. Um so this is the Montessi formula, so it's a similar so one to yeah, I really like this one. Um, it's similar to Gamma in the layout, so it's an E map, which is corridor straight through the middle, and um, you interact with the the, mon the the book basically. It's a spell book, and it opens up um, another attack for that character to use, and it's a beam attack. Um, it's an energy, and it's six dice. So I think it's a pretty good attack to, you know, put on some characters who maybe don't have a ranged attack or. You know, just need that extra, maybe a, like it's an energy attack. Maybe they're only physical attackers, and they need that second type of damage potential. So I think it's a, I think it's a, a good fun one to play. I don't see it played as often as I think it should because I don't think it's as competitive in the sense that you can't really break it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very slow scoring um, crisis in the sense that you basically. It, it's going to give up three victory points to whoever holds these three books on the on the map. So it's not really going to rattle up the score very quickly. Yeah. But I think it's fun. I think it's fun. I think we've played Montesi a few times. And, we've um, played it at least a couple of times, definitely. Yeah. Because I was super it's excited about it. So. Yeah, I think it's always useful. Like I think that's probably what it's best for, is just giving those physical brawlers that second attack that can really help and out. beam attack as well which is yeah beams beams are always good um yeah so i, re I really like this box set it comes with a couple of um tactics cards as well um three in fact it comes with pentagram of Parala, which um is a little bit broken you know maybe not broken but a very powerful um card it opens up the pentathletes um style of play which is you know you you can teleport your characters across the battlefield um it's a very good card um i have used it i think it's fun um i think it is a little bit abusable um so it'd be interesting to see how they manage that going forward if if indeed amg feel like they have to um i i personally um i can take it or leave it um, I think it's really fun for casual play, and I completely understand how it's broken in higher tier play. Um, you get the Vapors of Valtor, which is a kind of cool defensive card where you put down these extra tokens, um, and they might be illusions, so you might not actually hit the correct person, sort of thing. It's uh, you don't really see it used all that much. I think it's basically because Pentagrams is a slightly more powerful card, um, but. It's fun nonetheless. And finally, you get the Seven Sons of Cinnabus, which um, I think we both quite like this card. Um, I have taken it a few times. Um, it's a, a beam five, eight dice attack. Um, and, you know, it gives out incinerate. I just think it's, I think it's really fun. It's it's going to dish out the hurt if you get it off properly. Um, for example, on an EMAP, when people are uh, in a line in a straight line exactly that beam five is huge and um yeah you're going to be dishing out the hurt if you can man maneuver the game board in a way where you'll get the most out of it so yep dr strange and wong those top three for me i think you can take in any order okay so thor valkyries um miles no spider strange and wong I think it's really whatever characters you like the most, those three, it's going to give you access to different um, leadership abilities, which you can use the characters for from the core yeah. box set, particularly Strange and Wong and Thor, and, uh, and sorry, and, um, Miles and Ghost Spider, less so Thor and Valkyrie, but Thor, like I say, can pop in the Avengers. I think actually um, it's quite nice. You've got, um, obviously you've got Thor that can go to, in uh, Avengers, um, also you've got Valkyrie that can then team up with Strange in Defenders. Absolutely, of course. Yeah, I completely missed that. Um, 
by putting those top three together. So yeah, I think if you get those three, you really do. It really does open up, particularly defenders and Avengers, um, and then probably Web Warriors, and then Asgard. You still need a bit of help. You'll need either the Loki and um, Hela pack or the Angela and Enchantress pack to really finish up that affiliation. But it gives you the starts for it, and it's a, a both. They're all they're all fantastic models. So really, just pick what you like the look of. Um, hopefully, the breakdown of the sort of cards that come in there is useful for picking. Uh, which one you want to get first um i think really just go for it um the fourth box is something a little bit different for me it was um a little bit left field uh when i was looking at or when matt said oh this is what we're going to be talking about today um so i went with hawkeye and black widow so this is the um cp24 pack and it's slightly different because it doesn't give you a leadership it doesn't give you a new affiliation it doesn't give you a tactic um sorry a crisis card um, I think it just gives you two very useful characters. Um, Black Widow less so, but I think she will be seeing more play thanks to A-Force. I think she's pretty neat in A-Force, actually. Um, but she's in Avengers, not that she sees much play in Avengers. I think more people will probably play the one from the, the core set. But Hawkeye really is a fantastic character. He's in my a dick. Opinion. <laughs> um, he always overperforms at three threat. The range five, the dishing out um, uh, what do you call it, conditions um, on his normal attack. He can spend power to move, so he doesn't have to move as one of his actions. That then opens up the ability to fire his bow twice. Um, I'm just a really big fan of this character. And if you go for Doctor Strange and Wong beforehand, he fits in two affiliations and he fits in both Avengers and Defenders, which I think is is very cool. Um, the Hawkeye, is, uh, no, sorry, the Hawkeye, the uh, Black Widow um, is a three threat Black Widow. So it's um, a more expensive version of the one that you get in the core set. And um, it, how it works is you can't take them both when you're um, playing the game. Um, there can only be one Natasha Romanoff on the battlefield at the time. So if we get another Black Widow, um, which we very well may do, um, particularly with the new Black Widow uh, movie coming out, um, sort of introducing us to um, Florence Pugh's character of Yelena Belova, I think is it? Um, in I, think, the I think you nailed that, yeah. Yeah, in, in the comics, she is the second Black Widow. Um, sort of, a, I think she's, Natasha's sister, or might just be sisters in the sense that they were trained together. But if we get a, a Yelena um, Black Widow, for example, because she has a different um, sort of, what do they call them? Car um, alias. Uh, alias, yeah. Because they'll have a different alias, you could take them both. Um, so that would be interesting. Um, and with regards to the Black Widow herself, like I said, I'm trying her out more, particularly in A-Force. Um, her attacks are good and she has some ability to get you extra victory points outside of the crises so is an interesting character um she just takes a bit of a beating unfortunately she's not the most survivable compared to interestingly enough her two threat counterpart who um who's actually very survivable very survivable yeah um so that's interesting but um in this box set, you do get two tactics cards. You get heavy firepower and professionals, either of which really particularly see play. But professionals is a very um, flavorful character, basically a, a very flavorful tactics card. Sorry, basically, if you're taking both Hawkeye and Black Widow, they can sort of pass um, the objectives between each other, which I think is um, pretty cool. Um, and if you're playing for fun, playing for theme, I don't think there's many. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't want to take a card like that. And then I cheated. And that's <laughs> probably good to go. <laughs> Matt was like, we're going to pick five boxes. And I thought, five? Yeah, I can pick five boxes. Easy peasy. And then I couldn't pick a fifth. All right. Um, I just went for She-Hulk or Normal Hulk. Um, I think they're both very different characters, considering they're both big green beating machines. Um but yeah, we got She-Hulk at CP39, only recently came out, and Hulk CP4, who was literally one of the first box sets. Came <laughs> out with the start set. of that, in fact. Yeah, basically. Oh, very cool. Um, with She-Hulk, you get another leader. She is the leader of the A-Force. Um, 
and you get a couple of tactics cards too. Um, you get A Force Assemble, um, Agents of Smash, uh, Special Delivery. And I didn't write down the fourth one, but um, it, you get a fourth one as well, which is another A Force specific card. Um, poor planning on mine, I just realized I did not write that one down. Um, but it is a uh, stalwart defender as well, just off the top of my head. Awesome. Um, so <laughs> I was like, it's the one that I play. I don't really play it or something, I play the other one. Um, they are four, uh, three, shall I say, very powerful tactics cards in April Symbol, Stalwart Defenders, and Special Delivery. Agents of Smash is another fun, fluffy one. Um, you basically need to be playing both She Hulk and Hulk. And you can just pick up a size five piece of terrain and throw it long. So it's bananas if it goes off. You just oh, yeah. need to have great. you just need to have twelve threat in She Hulk and Hulk on the battlefield. Um, oh, I still want to run strange with the soul gem. She Hulk and Hulk as defenders. At eighteen and defenders. At 18, yeah. yeah. And if, I, if I get twenty, even better because I can chuck Wong in there as well. Yep, I, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Um, I also just like it fourteen. Um, she Hulk, Hulk, and Okoye. Yes. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah. I did play at 14, Strange, She Hulk, and Two Threat Black Widow. And that was actually a, night that was a nightmare. Yeah, I remember, you saying, I remember you saying. So I think there's legs in it. I think She Hulk is an extremely powerful character. Um, she's a really good leader. Her A Force um, leadership ability to be able to um, generate power on getting hit. It's a really powerful one, um, and generally I'm, I'm a massive fan at the moment, so that's why I sort of had to squeeze her in. On the flip side, you've got Hulk, who's, I think it's safe to say, a little bit maligned in MCP. You know, he doesn't see that much play. He He's one of those, I call them high floor, high ceiling characters. He's he's difficult to get his head your head around, um, but boy, if he goes off in a game, he's a tough one. Um, he's a tough one. Um, so... He fits in both Avengers and Defenders. So if you got Doctor Strange, you can, you know, slip him into a couple of affiliations. Then um, he does come with another um, another Crisis card, which is Gamma Waves, which is a very popular um, a very popular um, Crisis to play on. Um, it's another E one, so straight down the middle. It's quite yeah. funny because I think you say it's popular. I think it's very popular to play, but actually it's yeah. not not <laughs> actually a popular to play like people play it but it's not yeah. popular <laughs> yeah i think I, I completely understand what you're saying yeah and the main reason yeah it's there's a lot of victory points um on the board when you play gamma there are six victory points available from those three points you get one for yours two for the middle three for your opponents but the problem is if you're without, if you're not within two of one of these points then you're going to take a damage all right, so it's a, it's a little bit painful for the when you're trying to play not on the say with the uh, extracts for example if they're off to the side. Unfortunately, it's going to be a little sacrifice and getting damage there. So I don't mind it. I think it's quite fun. I think 15 is an interesting threat level which um, isn't used all that much. So I just think maybe um, Hulk gives you a little bit more. Uh, a little bit more cards that you can use, a few more cards that you can use out the box with just the starter set, because you also get three tactics cards, two of which I have never really seen play, Anger Management and Seeing Red, but you do get Gamma Launch, which just allows you to chuck your teammate long, which is very fun. Yeah, um, that, is, that was one of the reasons he got played early on. Yeah, yeah, and I think, I think um, he's seeing more play now with the whole uh, Doctor Strange pentagram pentathletes play um because funny enough when you, you you move hulk up right into the middle of your opponent's line he will wreck face um he will beat stuff into the ground um both these characters have the downside i'm doing air quotes here not that you can see me um of not having a flip side which you know it definitely is a downside but it's something that you can manage in game i think um but yeah, I think they're both two fun characters. Uh, I'm trying to get Hulk more on the battlefield at the moment. I've played a fair bit of She-Hulk over the last couple of weeks. Um, and really, I think with these six box sets and the core set, you're going to have a really nice collection and plenty of options with both models, Crisis 
and a good suite of powerful tactics cards as well. Um, because actually, you know, the ones from the core set are, not, are pretty good as well. Um, mm. Oh, yeah, definitely. They still see play, so... Absolutely, of course they do. Um, but those are my box sets. Um, I think we should probably move on to... Uh, I've hogged enough of the line right there. On to the bad guys. What we... Uh, <coughs> Yeah, so, uh, yeah, th first thoughts just on yours. I thought that's, that's a decent line of characters. Um, good. But obviously they're rubbish because they're all good guys. So um, we're going to move on to the bad guys. And um, now I would I would like to point out that we were discussing this while after we discussed the theme of the episode. Um, I was like, do you know what? After sitting down, I was like, this is really hard for bad guys. Because... Yeah. <laughs> Quite a few of the bad guy characters are double packaged with a good guy or a sort of a you know unaffiliated guy. Um, and uh, I was like, well, it, it it doesn't limit my options. It just means that I'm gonna have to throw a couple of good guys in there at the same time. Um, <laughs> or as you'll see from the first three picks, it's just a single character model. Yeah. So um, I'm scared of that first one, Matt. I, 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 I don't know why he's doing <laughs> he does nothing on the table. So I am just going to uh, bring up my notes that I, I've, I've written some down. I've got some on my phone, and you foolishly, I did. Nobody. Obviously, you nobody with that first pick did not. Did not. So um, very much like Hulk, this is the first bad guy model that came out. Um, it came out at the same time as the core set. Um, it was released alongside. Um, of the core set with the measurements and it was Hulk and my first pick is Mr. Modoc. Um, he is incredible in game. Uh, he is a floating head in a chair. If you're not familiar with him, um, it's probably because he is very comic book based. Um, the only time you've really seen him outside of the comic books is in video games. Um, he is the main bad guy in the Avengers video game, which is, you know, kind of, again, a bit hit and miss. Some people quite like it, some people get bored of it very quickly, which I did. Um, the actual game itself was fine. Um, and, but Modok in it was great, and I love Modok as a character. I love him in the comics um, and his brief appearances in cartoons and things. Um, he's stupid. He is a scientist who got experimented on, and he became a floating head in a chair. However, in Crisis Protocol, he is incredible. Um, he is a five threat character, and he does exactly what you'd expect a five threat character to do, which is ruin everyone's day. Um, he's got some very strong attacks. Uh, he's got our first mental attack in the game. Um, obviously, there's quite a few now, but coming into the game, he was the first character to have a mental attack, which could ruin a lot of characters' days, looking at you, Captain America. Yep. Um, and he really was one of the first ways of actually beating up Captain America, um, yeah. sort of not, not easily because it's still Captain America, but certainly, um, certainly days him. Certainly uh, no, I, I think I mean, actually it's, it's, better, it's easier to KO him with Modok because I, I think he, Captain America's thing is only on is only against physical and energy attacks. Oh, uh, that is true. Yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah, I'm just guessing. I, I, I haven't played Captain America in a long time, so. Uh, no, it makes sense. That's for the Vibranium Shield. I was more just thinking for the um, I can do this all day on his days because... Uh, yeah, of course, Blanks uh, count as well. Yeah, Blanks count, so... So, yeah, so he is very hard, but Modok definitely does help um, reduce that. Oh, absolutely. That. Yeah. Um, and he also comes with a tactics uh, crisis card as well, um, which is Alien Ship Crashes Downtown. Now, this is one of the ones where it's a sea map, so there's three across the middle. Um... And it's a slightly random one, is that you have to search them. So, again, it can be a bit annoying, but there are ways now in the game to mitigate that a little bit. Um, but yeah. you basically, on a crit, you find the alien power core and you get to like, run away with it. It's worth a few victory points. It's just, if you don't find it early in the game, it's obviously not worth many points. So, um, it can be a tad I mean, annoying. Yeah, just to jump in here, you can go the whole game. And never find it to be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which, um, I actually think this one's on a crit or a wild. I'm just I'm trying to remember off the top of my head though. No, so no, it's this not, is it's, it's roll to it's die. Just it's just a crit. Yeah. It's just a crit. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it's the same as um, scroll leader person. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you can go the whole game without finding it. Now the reality gem is a way of helping with that. Absolutely. Uh, 
What's that? Absolutely, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which I uh, only realised recently, actually, because I didn't realise. I thought it was only on attacks and defence roles, but it's actually on interact roles as well, um, which is which is great. Which changes a skull to a crit. So um, that's good. Um, so he also comes with some decent tactics cards. He's got his aim lackeys, which allows you to move another character, um, which is always you know movement in this game is key. Um, Psychic Fortress, which is a basically gives cover to all the characters within three of him. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Uh, I am just doing it most of this off the top of my head. Um, he also has Recalibration Matrix, which is a pretty good card. Doesn't see a huge amount of play, but yeah. essentially after an attack has all been rolled and everything, you can pay three power. I think it's three power. Um, and you can basically, it makes ev both players reroll all the attack and all the defense dice. Um, so that can really, if, if, you, if the person you're playing against had a really good defense roll and you just like, nah, no, um, it, it's pretty good. Um, I don't see it all that much, but I guess because it's quite expensive, but it can change a game. Um, yeah. So that is Modoc. Um, it's also an awesome model. Okay. Like, it's still possibly my, probably my top five models in the game. I'm not sure in which order I've decided on these, but definitely in the top five. I think they just, it, they perfectly encapsulated the ludicrousness that is Modoc. Oh, 100%. He's, he's I think, like, yeah. he's got his frown on, you know he's, like, cursing someone <laughs> yeah. for, like, no reason. Probably a minion. He's just like, for God's sake, do you not yeah. know who I am? Well, um, I just want to chime in here as well. I've just found out that Modoc's getting an animated se series this year. Matt. Oh, yeah, he <laughs> is. Uh, do you know what, though? I'm not sure. I'm... I'm... <sighs> So as much as I will watch it, I know I'll watch it. Like there's no doubt I won't watch it. But it it it's an in, it's like him and his family. Yeah, it's stop motion as well. So if you're not into stop motion, so I, I uh like I'm keen, but at the same and I like the voice actors and stuff are great. But um because it's yeah, um, Pat Oswald. Pat Oswald. Pat Oswald. Yeah. Uh, I'm just not convinced it's going to be quite where what I want it. Yeah, it, it, I, I would rather see Modok as the antagonist of like a new live action show because I'd love to see him done in live action because it'd be stupid. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so my second pick, and oh, also Modok is in the Cabal um, and yeah. also in the Criminal Syndicate, which we're now about to get to. Nice, smooth. Uh, yeah, thanks. Transitions. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the King of Crime, um, the Kingpin, Mr. Wilson Fisk. Um, such a great bad guy. Um, he's been in, like, he's been, in, whereas Modoc's really not been in anything much. Like, he's been in, like, there's plenty he's been in, but not really as a main character. You now have the Kingpin, who is a main Spider-Man bad guy, a main Daredevil bad guy. He's been in, uh, Defenders. He's been in loads of other stuff that I can't now think of, but I definitely have written down somewhere. Um... He's been played by loads of different actors. Vincent D'Onofrio in Daredevil was Chef's spot on. Kiss. So good. Not quite as like big as like, you know, some of them are, but I don't care. He filled that role to perfection. He was, oh, he was just so it, it, such a presence. And if he doesn't get into the MCU, I'm gonna be so disappointed. Um, I, I, I get everything crossed for this. Everything. This is yeah. all I want. This is all I want is just Vincent D'Onofrio um, in the MCU. Yeah. With Spider Man, with Daredevil, with oh She Hulk. Oh my god, it's Holland. I can just see it. I can just yeah. see it. He's so good. Yeah. Um he he's he would uh, he would also be up there in terms of performance of bad guys along with Alfred Molina as Dr. Octopus. Yeah. Because that was also perfect. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um off topic. But anyway, so Kingpin, absolutely great. Um he is the leader of the criminal syndicate. His leadership ability is bonkers. Um, if you want to play objective play style games, um, and not so much about the beating up of people, although they can, de you know, don't get me wrong, Criminal Syndicate can definitely do that. Um, Kingpin is your man to do that. Um, and he just helps you take objectives and um, helps you score a lot of points. He's also an absolute tank in game. He can just take a beating. Um, he can definitely be taken out, but he, he, he can... He's got decent defenses. He can reduce damage, um, and you know it's kingpin, so he headbutts people a lot. Oh, yeah. um, 
in his box set, you get another crisis card. You get uh, Mayor Fisk vows to find missing witnesses, which is a 16 threat. You got me lost. I don't ever choose it because it's a 16. No, I can't remember if it's 16 <laughs> or 14. It's is, uh, 16. It, it's 16, yeah. I, I can't remember what the 14 one is. I always get those confused. Um, Senators is 14. Senators, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, um, missing witnesses, there's two objectives on the table. Yeah. I think. Um, yep. And it's um, they can't they're, they're what they're civilians, but you don't pick them up, and they kind of run around and stun people yeah. uh, trying to claim them, which is annoying. But it's actually a really fun one to play, and it's going to be similar to the Terrigen Mist mm. scenario yep. that they've sh shown off now with um, Inhumans. Yeah, um, it's exactly the same setup as Terrigen Mist actually, and they, they move, but they cause poison instead of stun. So that's going to be cool. Um, his team tactics cards, he also comes with arguably the most likely to be restricted card coming up in the <laughs> restrictions. We'll get to that one last. He's got his two um, criminal syndicate cards, all according to plan, which is... Um, uh, I've not played it because I don't know if it's worth it, but then I, the more I think about it, the more I think it's probably worth it if you can pull it off. Um, but you basically spend 10 power across all of your characters and you get to be first player. Oh, I think it's amazing. I think it's brilliant. I just it's think just the ten power. I know you can spread it out across all your characters, but late it, late game, if you're quite powered up and you yeah. really need that turn, then it it is probably worth it. I just haven't been brave enough to to try it yet. I also think it's tricky because criminal syndicate tend to go a little bit taller, and they don't tend to go quite as wide. So you yeah. don't have as many characters with as much power. Yeah, and if you're getting a little bit more wide, I think it's a, I think it's a brilliant card to just be like, nope. <laughs> yeah, de definitely, definitely could could be very very useful. Um, and it, it it's just one of those things, especially when you tend to have because a, a lot of the criminal syndicate characters are a little bit on the cheaper side, so you do tend to have a little bit more characters. So I've definitely found myself going second in most games with criminal syndicate. Um, at some point, I'll give it a go. Um, just not brave enough yet. So the second card is Shadow Organization. Now this is a card I really like because um, it shuts down characters like Hawkeye and Rocket Raccoon. Uh, basically, in the power phase, any Criminal Syndicate character can spend two power, and they basically gain stealth. They can't be can't be targeted by attacks unless um, the enemy character is within two uh, range two of them, um, and that's great. Especially if you're holding objectives, you've got a character that might be running off with an objective that you don't want easily shot. Um, I used it against Pat when he had his Thanos. Um, his Thanos mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to get two attacks off. It turned out in the end he could only get one. Completely fluffed the attack and then Modok absolutely annihilated Thanos. It was perfect. Yeah. No, I perfect. think it's I think it's a really good card actually. I, um, two power, it's not it's not cheap. But it's not cheap. And it's especially using like, multiple characters. Yeah. It's gonna save it's gonna it's gonna save those characters though. It really will. Um, oh, like said, uh, me forgetting to use it almost cost me Kingpin in one game. So, oh. almost. It, it worked out okay in the end, but um, that could have changed the game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and his last card is... is um, It's... Uh, so, I didn't really see a problem with it until I realised it wasn't a Criminal Syndicate-only card. Um, <laughs> it's Hired Muscle. And now this card basically lets you um, move up spend one power and any civilian objective within two within range three you can move to range two yeah uh and honestly in criminal syndicate not a huge problem especially if you try to pull it off first turn to drag a few objectives towards you because generally you don't then have the power to grab the further away ones anyway then it got used against me with asgard and suddenly I realised why it was a problem, because three of the civilians just got gobbled up by the hungry power carrying Asgardians. And uh, luckily yeah. I had some well-laid plans, but... Um, uh, it, 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 yeah, it's an issue in, um, I, would, I would argue, Asgardians and maybe Black Order? Do they get extra power? No. Well, no. they do take gems, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I think you see it more in Criminal Syndicate and Asgard. Um, there are yeah, it's definitely good. Like it. it's good in any faction, essentially. Oh, yeah, I know the other one. I, was, I know the other one I was thinking of that it would be really good for, but I haven't tried it yet. It's Brotherhood, with Mystique's leadership ability, because yeah. then you can it, um, only still the characters doing it still can't get the power, but 
Um, obviously, any other character that are grabbing them gets to refund that one power. Yeah. Or what you could actually do is run forward, grab one, get your power back, and then use hide muscle. I can see it. So that might be something I try if it doesn't get banned. Or <laughs> I, I, it's, I think it's verging on banned, but I think it'll be restricted. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I'm with you. I, I lean on the side of I, I think it should be banned. I guess without the game, I think it's a headache. But you know, I, or, I or it gets FAQ to be a specific um, affiliation. Yeah, I don't think that will happen, but I, yeah. I feel like it's less of a problem in Criminal Syndicate. I would agree. Um, so that is that is Mr. Fisk. Um, he, like I said, leader of Criminal Syndicate. Um, awesome, awesome model. Um, standing on Daredevil's, um, on the uh, Nelson and Murdoch sign, uh, which is just, just, oh, Vincent, yeah. getting to the MCU. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, my third pick is another leader. Um, me and Pat went sort of, uh, sort of similar on this. Um, and this is the leader of the Spider Foes. This is Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin. Um, this was definitely my favourite model when it came out. Yeah, uh, is again definitely up there in top top. I would say he's probably in the top three. Yeah, um, this, this model is fantastic because oh, this is nineties cartoon Spider Man, yeah. and oh my god, just so so good. Just just buy it. I don't care if you don't even like. <laughs> don't, I don't care if you're not even gonna play him. Go and buy that model. It's yeah. it's so good. And I want more 90s Spider-Man bad guys. Oh, yes. Um, now, he doesn't come with a lot. Um, his, he, he himself, uh, it's not a great leadership ability. Spider-Foes, it's okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's, it's okay. Ooh. Like, it's, it's not bottom, like, bottom level leadership abilities. It's fine. It's mm -hmm. like, it's fine. Like, yep. It's fine. I think that's fair. I think it's fine. Yeah, that's probably fair. Like, it, I'm, I'm not going to be like, it's Criminal Syndicate good or it's Cabal good. Because oh, out, out of what I'm choosing here... Oh, out of those, yeah, absolutely. Um, and when we get on to the next, you know, bit, uh, it's, it's definitely at the bottom of all of those. However, it does unlock spider foes because I've got Kingpin and I get... Um, Doctor Octopus oh. and the corset. I didn't actually talk about the corset characters because I completely forgot. Yeah, neither um, did I. I mean, no. you did mention it briefly, but um, I'll come back to that at the end and just quickly. Yes. So, so you can play Spider Foes with Doc Ock, Green Goblin, and um, Kingpin, and then obviously you know chuck a couple of the characters in there. Um, Venom's obviously another one that's available for them at the moment, but he's obviously not. Um, he didn't make. He didn't quite make my list. Um, yeah. Just. Because like yeah, he's not, he's not quite, quite. Yeah, quite it's, good it, I think it's the same reason he didn't quite make my list. Is I'm taking another. You need another box set to really open him up. So yeah. for you, you need a Green Goblin to open up Venom. For me, I needed uh, Miles and Ghost Spider to open up. Yeah, Venom. I think if I yeah, that's the thing. I think if I, you don't take Green Goblin, you probably, I probably would put Venom in there. But I needed Venom. I needed Green Goblin there to really make use of Venom. Yeah. So it, it counts. He got knocked off the list basically. Um, the tactics cards that Goblin comes with, uh, he only comes with two. Um, and it's Blind Obsession, which I've completely forgotten what that card does. Uh, I mean, there's so much text on this thing. Um, it's the one where you, you sort of have to you pick a character. It's, it costs three power. Mm. You basically gain, you choose a character, and that character gains an obsession token. Yeah, that's then it. Then choose an to... enemy character. And then while the character that played this card has the obsession token, it adds two dice to its attack rolls. That's it. That's it. So not bad um, if you want to specifically target someone. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's uh it's another one of those sort of pick a character and want them dead. And this will help. Um I think the three power is quite expensive, but Yeah, yeah. It's to target one one other character is it's not cheap. Uh, I guess you've got a plan to you know Exactly. This if, is, if the, if this the is opponent's a got a big character opposite you, it might be worth it. But this is definitely a build around team tactics cards. Like you, you, you take blind obsession with the intention of using blind obsession to its max. Um, yeah. This isn't one that just randomly makes your eight, and you might throw it in every now and then. Um, I think you need to really know what you're doing with this card. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Um, the other card that uh, Goblin comes with is super thematic, and I actually pulled it off the other day, which was <laughs> a joy, an absolute joy. Um, it's called Well Laid Plans, and it requires you to have Dr. Octopus and Green Goblin on the table. You spend three power with both of them. And every enemy model holding an objective token, doesn't matter what the uh, civilian or asset token, I believe, which I think is basically any objective it's, token. It's just, it just says objective token, actually. Oh, does it? Says, okay, I'm yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. card then. Um, I think, I'm thinking it might be thinking of criminal syndicate leadership, actually. Um, so anyone holding an objective, any enemy character holding an objective, you roll five dice. For every crit wild... That's it. That's it, yep. They take a damage. And if they take a damage, they automatically drop their objective token. Yeah. And it doesn't matter where on the table they are at this point. There's, there's no specific range. My opponent was yeah. completely like, really? There's no range? I'm like, nah. Um, uh, it's just so good. Like, it, it, it's an investment, and you do have to, again, you're building around this card. Yeah. But it, and it, but it is unaffiliated, so you don't have to be running spider foes to do this, because Green Goblin is also in Criminal Syndicate. He is, exactly. Yeah. Um, which again I, makes a good choice for this. Yeah. The selection of characters you've chosen. Yeah. Um, there's plenty of crossover in, in this. So the first three characters I've chosen are basically all Criminal Syndicate. Um, two of them are Cabal. And Green Goblin then unlocks Spider Foes, um, which Kingpin is also in Spider Foes. So you've got three affiliations at this point of my buying boxes and that's three yeah. models as well so you, you you're only actually up to a total of eight models if you're playing bad guys at this point <laughs> but you have got they're, three they're powerful. i should i should put it out there as a guy who hasn't played even like any of those three characters you pick um they are all prime targets when i i'm opposite them um modok either for avoiding or putting everything up I have in trying to remove them from the board and then in Kingpin and Green Goblin you just have two really good technical pieces which are gonna do their job and do their job well. I think interestingly you don't really touch on Green Goblin. Green Goblin is basically two characters in one. His I should, have, I should Yeah I should have mentioned that a bit more actually. Yeah Green Goblin um, one is... One of the most interesting characters in the game. Uh, I, I think with um, Black Bolt coming out we have, a, we have a similar sort of thing True. happening but um, certainly Green Goblin at the moment for at least for two two more weeks is the character that has the biggest change when his card flips um yeah. he goes from having sort of solid physical defense um to basically going mental but having a like a six mental defense five um, five five sorry yeah. um but also get instead of having um a hit and run ability he then gets uh, an abs a ram ability yep um which is pretty good actually it's um, really basically, it's like a throw, but just throw it doesn't good. damage him. So it's brilliant. Um, um, and throws are just, arguably yeah. harder to dodge than attacks. Oh, sometimes. absolutely, yeah, so, absolutely. Depends who you're doing it against, but it's just because you don't need to roll the dice, is it? It's, it's exactly, yeah. Um, uh, it's, yeah, a few other changes. His pumpkin bombs, you get an extra dice, dice on that. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, if you're facing Peter Parker. Um, or, no, he has that on both sides. He has that on both sides, yeah. If, if he's in range, I should have mentioned that as well. He's slightly, <laughs> it's the only time we've seen it, actually, and I'm, 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 I hope we see more of this in the future. Absolutely. Um, is that he, if uh, your opponent is running Peter Parker, uh, it doesn't specify, it says Peter Parker, not Spider-Man, I think. Yeah, yeah you're correct. Because yeah. um, I, I feel like we are getting a second Peter Parker soon. Um, uh, he has to use his first action to attack him if he's in range. Is that right? I think so. Yeah. Um, so your opponent could be sneaky and just move if they're not worried about Spider-Man so much. They could move Spider-Man within range and be like, "Well, just go ahead. You know, waste your waste at least one of your actions attacking him." Um, not that attacking is ever a waste, but it might it might mean that you you don't hit a juicier target or a exactly target. or you know you needed to double move to get onto an objective or whatever. So yeah. it de definitely. Um, it definitely can be could be that. annoying, but I, I hope we see that more of that in the future because I, I feel like they're missing a trick slightly by not having sort of the, more of the rivalries in the game. I agree. So, next up, this is where I then struggled a little bit. Uh, not well. Hmm. I think so, this next box set was kind of 
I was I was quite into you picking this next box set. I think yeah, I mean, this one was quite... After, uh, mm, it's difficult. So I, it wasn't automatically there. And then I was the more I thought about it, the more I was like, yeah, actually, this one has to, uh, this one has to then be there. So it's Magneto and Toad. Um, now, I love X-Men and I love the mutants. And Magneto is amazing. Um, again, very popular character, has had two, two wonderful actors playing him, um, and is just a, such a great bad guy. And in the comics, he's actually very much a good guy. In the uh, 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 well, uh, he sort of. he yeah okay yeah he's a very, uh, he's a, he's a very sympathetic he's, bad. He's a, cha- he's a great character. He's yes. a great character. Yes, yeah. Great character. Um, Marley. Yeah. And who? Yeah. Well. Yeah, when you compare his like backstory and what he's done to what Mystique has done in the past, I think Mystique's way eviler. Oh, um, um, like Mystique is is horrifying in some of her background. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, I have these children, and I just ignore all these children. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. Um, no, Magneto's wicked. But Magneto and Toad. I should mention that Toad is in this box as well. So he also comes with two cool metal constructs, but that's part of his rules. Um, we were wondering how they would factor in, and then we found out, and it's like, this is great. Magneto is um, a very strong guy, six threat. He's, the, he's one of the leaders of the Brotherhood of Mutants, um, as you would expect. Mm-hmm. He's also in Cabal. He is. Um, he's not in Criminal Syndicate. He is not. So, which is fine. He, he shouldn't be in there. That, was, that would have been stupid. His box set is chunky. Like I said, it comes with him and Toad. Toad is not in Cabal. Um, he is only in Brotherhood, but he's actually a very useful little two threat. So if you can sneak him in, he's quite good to sneak into lists. He's quite effective. He can hop around, grab objectives, and he can be slightly further away to grab them or interact with them. Um, and he generally overperforms for a two threat character. I'd say. I... Oh yeah, I, for I me, agree. For me, he has anyway. And uh, I, for a guy who plays good guys, I. I... I, I try and put Toad in sometimes. I think um, you know to- Toad's been on the X Men before. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, um, and I think he's wicked for two for two threat. Um, his front side is great. You just really want to keep him on that front side because yeah, when you go he's down, very, he's three, very killable. Unfortunately, he's very yeah. killable on the back. Side, he does have ways so. to mitigate that, but he he is very easy to splatter. Yeah. Um, I'm just every time I think of it, I just think Storm being like, do you know what happens when a Toad gets hit by lightning? What does happen? Uh, uh, the same as everything else. Uh, okay. <laughs> so um, then we have his tactics cards, and I've already forgotten what half of them do. So firstly, he comes with the crisis card, which is mutant extremist target U.S. senators, um, which is the first fourteen threat one we have. Yeah. Which is annoying because if you do get all the brotherhood characters, they are, they are fifteen threat. Yeah. <laughs> why do you do this to so me? Why? I'm pretty sure all the X Men are 14, which is really annoying. Yeah, yeah which is so, yeah. yeah, really annoying. Thanks for that, AMG. Yeah. Um, and Senators is a C map? It is a C map, yep. Um, yeah. So it's another one of the civilian ones. But... And they are grab them and hold them, and then they slow you down and reduce your defenses. Slow you down and reduce your defenses. You're perfect. Yes. Um, why I like this one compared to the other ones is you just for you spend a power and you interact with the token. Yep. You flip it over. Is it the senator? Nope. Well, it must be one of the other two. And then you go search one of the other ones. There's no dice exactly. scrolling. There's no randomness. You're definitely going to find. He the is senator. there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I should so say I it's, only, it's only one more. of the tokens. It's not not all three. Yeah. Um, so you place three tokens, tokens down. One of them is the senator. Um, and he's worth two victory points a turn if you do have him. But yeah, like Pat said, it's not random. There is no chance of not ever finding him during a game. Well, unless you don't search the one he's under, I suppose. But um, chances of that happening are reasonably slim. Agreed. Yeah, I think I think this is a much better design space for AMG to use rather than the dice rolling. Um, I just don't yeah. like random. <laughs> um, I don't like to spend actions doing nothing, which is what sometimes it feels like on those other ones. Whereas this is good. We've yeah. had fun playing this one, I think. 
Uh, I like this one. It's, it was in my. It's, it was uh, usually in my criminal syndicate um, list, and I'm pretty sure it's still in my crim- uh, Brotherhood of Criminals list. Mm. Uh, so tactics card wise, he comes with four. Um, so three of them are basically Brotherhood specific. Two of them, two of those three are basically Magneto specific, um, and one of them is one I've completely forgotten what it does. So hit me up. Oh, actually, no, I do know what it does. I, I, I well, <laughs> guess it's Heath Ho, but you can look it up. So that when I say it and I'm wrong, you can correct me. Um, so Asteroid M is a teleporting one. You can choose two characters, and as long as they're not holding, as long as the one you're teleporting isn't holding an objective, you can teleport the other one to within one of that character. Oh, this uh, this caught me in a pickle once when you just teleported Magneto over. I was yeah, yeah freaking passy defense roll though, didn't you? Um, I did. I did. <laughs> actually, no, no, you didn't. It was the fact you passed the defense roll with previously that I had to then do that, but it, it almost worked. Um, but yeah, it's great to get Magneto across the board, especially when Toad's the other side of the table. And you're just like, whoop. Okay, so we've got Magnetic Refraction next, um, which is uh, the first reusable card that we've had in the game. If you're playing Brotherhood, uh, Magneto can use uh, this card. He's a bit like uh, Aim Lack, uh, not Aim Lack, he's Psychic Force Field by Modoc. Uh, he basically gives a cover bonus to anyone near him. And if you are playing the Brotherhood Affiliation, it can then go back into your tactics cards and you can use it again later in the game. I think it's two or three power, um, but to provide cover for your um, guys, it's really useful. Yeah, uh, two, power. Has, two power. Yeah, yeah. So to provide cover that uh, in a bubble, that's really good. Uh, then we've got Magnetic Crush, uh, which is an attack card that Magneto can use. And it's pretty horrendous. Um, he basically sucks up all of the terrain nearby, uh, which it gets destroyed, adds that number of the size of all the terrain you've destroyed into the attack roll, um, and then you just wipe away a character on the table. But Matt, is it not usually to a maximum of 10 dice on, on these attacks? Oh no, Pat! There is mm. no maximum! Yeah, that was that was a beast who... My 14 yeah, dice was, magnetic was crush onto uh, Beast or Cyclops, whoever it was. It was Beast, yeah. It was, it was Beast. beast. <laughs> oh, poor Beast. Um... Yeah, that was that was fun rolling that many dice. It's just nice to roll that many dice sometimes. It is. Um, it it's um. Ooh. Yeah, it's a good card. I I, I not, wouldn't necessarily say it was a must take. Um, I would say magnetic refraction is actually a better card. Um, oh yeah, I agree. Unless you unless you do just have someone you need to crush, in which case you can take crush. Um, then we've got heave ho, which. I can't remember exactly what it oh. does. I'm pretty sure. I know the card has got Blob and Toad on it. And they're throwing well, a curse. Depends on what version you have, Matt. The curse oh, this is a reprint. reprint. Yeah, so it's the excellent one that has Blob and Toad on it. Yeah. The um, other one I think has Rocket and Strange. Weird oh, enough, okay. but yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure it's it's a throw. It is a throw, yeah. It's it's a within two, size two throw throw it medium for one power from each of those two characters. Yeah. So it's a cheap right? throw, it's a um, cheap... and it allows characters that can't normally throw to throw. Yeah. Um, I see why it's in this box set, because throwing terrain is important for the Brotherhood. It's very important. Um, I should mention that, actually. But I, I think there are better ways of throwing. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> spend a tactics card on it, unless you were really... Although, if you're playing a faction, Criminal Syndicate, for example, which don't have a huge amount of throws in it, Kind of useful. It's just size two, Matt. That's what I look at, and it's it makes me right. Essentially three damage. I can take out Rocket. But you can take out an injured Toad as well. Yeah, that's true. Um, so Magneto himself is six threat. He does a lot of work. He's got some very good attacks. He's got some very good special abilities that mostly involve throwing things. Um, he has very good defenses, uh, if you, uh, especially if you spend some power. Um, and his leadership ability is bonkers if you want to be a battery of power. Uh, basically, any terrain that gets destroyed, you can just dish out power for the size of the terrain to different characters. And this is like every time someone destroys a piece of terrain. Um, you can only get affected by it once per turn, so each character can only gain it once per activation, essentially. Um, but with, It just means with, you're probably not running out of power. You're just not. It really You're just not running out of power. 
Um, I mean, I think we did play a game once where you literally ran out of terrain that you could use. So that I is. I think there was, a, there was a couple of bits the far corner, but then yeah. Magneto is placing his structures every turn, so there's always going to be some. It was always that. Yeah, it was. It was all. You always have that to fall back on. Yeah, so Magneto does place his little metal structures, and if there's not two on the table, you can place one. And he gains yeah. extra power from it, and then you can obviously use it as um, you can use it as uh, line of sight for his attacks, and then it gets destroyed, which gets you power. Um, or you can throw it, or you can use it to just generate more power from Magneto. So Magneto never really runs out of power unless, like, you literally run out of terrain, which doesn't end up. I mean, you can now, also just have those turns where, you're like, I am spending everything. <laughs> there is also it is terrifying. So terrifying. Following on from this box was uh i basically ended up because patchy and i thought i'd cheat um, <laughs> and i'll talk about these at the same time because i'm only going to really talk about the bad guys but then i'll quickly go over the, um the good guys that come with them and why they're kind of useful um so it was either wolverine uh sorry wolverine same tooth uh or mystique and beast now annoyingly they split these packs up so that you got one good guy and one bad guy in each one don't know why i know I, mean, I understand wolverine and same tooth I don't really understand Mystique and Beast. I, uh, apart they're from they're both, both blue. blue. That <laughs> literally, I was, I was like, they're both blue. I, I, I'm annoyed that it wasn't um, the other way around. Um, I agree. And it wasn't Mystique and Same Tooth and Wolverine and Beast. Just because people that want to buy a more specific like affiliation then had to buy at least three boxes. If you wanted to play X Men, you had Storm and Cyclops, Wolverine and Same Tooth, Mystique and Beast. And if you want to play. Ball, it's Magneto Toad, Wolverine and Safety, and Mystique and Beast. So kind of annoying, but I I, I do understand the Wolverine and Safety to the box. I agree. Um, so Sabretooth is um, uh, an attacking character. He moves long, he has some good attacks, he can heal. Um, he can move when he gets attacked. Yeah. So he can get close he's, he's, to the opponent. He can count. He's chunky as well. You know, he's 12, 12 health. He's got healing. Yeah, he's health. health. It's... Um, and he's, he's just a very aggressive character if you want him to be. Um, and the yeah. fact that he heals um, is nice. Doesn't heal quite as much as Wolverine, but that's fine. Um, you also get some decent cards in his box. So you've got one two punch, which is a reprint. Um, and Pat's now going to tell you what it does. Whoa, 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 you can't put me on the spot like that. All right, I'll go into the next ones and you can back to that. Um, <laughs> I only wrote down like the specific ones. Uh, I don't know what the she does. So, it, I, um, I think you need basically extra two allied characters. You need allied characters within two of each other. You spend the power each and you add two dice to the That's what attack. I thought it was. That's, that, that's what I thought it was. A like, couple of extra dice in an attack if you've got two characters. It's not, wick, it's not great, but... It's fine. Yeah. Again, it's, it's probably it's not going to take up one of your eight slots, but if you've got a reason for it, maybe maybe it would. Yeah. Um, then you've got Weapon X Program. Um, now, this is great. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to be playing this hopefully soon. Mm -hmm. uh, this allows you to throw the character. Is it short? Yeah, it's only short. Yeah. But again, if you collide with something, you don't take any damage and your opponent's going to have to roll some dodge dice. Oh, yes. Um, so it, it, it's arguably some free damage, um, but it costs two power. Uh, I think it's three. Okay. It's, yeah, it's it's not cheap, but um, I think That's fine. because That's yeah, fine. both both Sabretooth and Wolverine are size three when they're being thrown. So you know that's four damage that's just just going in. It's as well effectively. Yeah. If you want to be getting in. Um, and then we have a card similar to Odin's Blessing, but the the uh, the mutant. But well, no, it's not really the mutant version. I don't believe. It's just, it's, it's just if you've got healing factor. If you've got healing factor. So if we see any other characters down the line with healing factor, we haven't got any at the moment, but I'm assuming at some point we will get some. Um, exceptional healing allows you to reduce damage you take to one. Um, so if you've got that, so if that opponent does, you know, spike those dice real high. Mm -hmm. um, and you're like, oh, you're taking 10 damage. It's like, <laughs> no, I'm not. I take... <laughs> I'll take it it's one. Good. And then I'm going to activate Saber Tooth and heal that one I just took. Um, which is great. Uh, which is a really good card. So Saber Tooth is really fun. Now, on the flip side of that, 
you've got Mystique. Now, Mystique has a long move as well. Um, she's yeah. certainly not as tanky. Um, nope. She doesn't generate as much power um, nope. because <laughs> her attacks are... She, uh, her pistol attacks just generate one guaranteed power rather than equal to damage dealt, which is good. And they do have the rapid fire rule, so you could generate two power a turn if, or four power if you're doing it twice. Yep. Um, you do have to roll a hit, which sounds easy. It's not. Until it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not easy. Um, yep. She does have a decent second attack, actually. Yeah, um, oh, it's a really good which, one. It's a really good which one. causes stun before damage is dealt, which... Uh, stun means your opponent only ever gains one power off the attack. Yep. Um, so before the, doing it before the damage is dealt, because normally it's done afterwards, but um, I basically used her against Valkyrie uh, the other day. Not the, not the best matchup in close combat, not going to argue with that, but Mystique runs in. I think she was already stood there, actually. Um, uses... Uh, I've completely forgotten what the attack is. Espionage. Espionage. Uh, it's a six-dice attack. I spiked reasonably well. I think I did six damage off of this, nice. um, which was nice. Uh, which is enough to one shot Valkyrie. Um, he played, or he went to play Odin's Blessing, and then I went, uh, Unfortunately, Mystique is a shapeshifter, and she shuts down any reactive abilities or reactive tactics cards. So he went, yeah. Bugger. <laughs> and Valkyrie yeah. went, Boof. Well, actually, she just got dazed. She wasn't, she wasn't KO'd. Um, Valkyrie Still nice. got revenge next turn. But it was very nice. Um, and that shapeshifter ability is so useful when they're trying to play defensive abilities that are reactive, and you're like, Nah. You can't do that. Uh, I think it's really good. Uh, she also has access to Deception, um, which is a tactics card, which is a Mystique-only tactics card. It is free, which is bonkers. That it doesn't cost <laughs> anything to do. Um, and you select an enemy character within range 4 that isn't within range 2 of any non-dazed uh, friendly characters, friendly to them. Um, and you can make them move their speed in the direction of Mystique. So you could drag a character into a trap, like essentially, and start beating them up. Or you could just drag them off an objective. Um, it's just a really good card and really useful in this game. It's great. Um, she also comes with the Books of Truth, which allows you to re-roll all of your dice in an attack roll or defense roll, and yeah, it's including like the skulls. Matrix. Yeah, it's basically like the calibration matrix, but... I think it's, it's just your dice, though, isn't it? Exactly, yeah, it's just yeah. your dice. Uh, but it's yeah. skulls as well, which is the same as recalibration matrix, it which is good. Um, so it's literally every dice, not just the ones that are re-rollable. Um, and she comes with a reprint of Advanced R&D, which is a very useful card, especially in Brotherhood, because um, it allows you to spread power out amongst your other characters. So one character can play it, spend an amount of power, you can then spread that power out amongst your other characters. Um, and this is actually a really useful card to have in Brotherhood because you do tend to end up with quite a bit of power, especially if you're using Magneto's um, leadership. That being said, Mystique is the second leader of the Brotherhood, um, and she has some pretty interesting uh, leadership ability herself. Arguably, it could be better than Magneto's if you're playing a very um, objective-based game. Uh, Magneto's is a bit more aggressive. Um, but Mystique allows you to regain a power if you're picking up an extract token. Um, you spend yeah. the power, uh, so you can't get it, pick it up for free, but you can spend the power, pick it up, and then you get that one power back. And also, you gives another option of you can interact with a secure token um, and place a token on it, and you count as holding that, even if you then move away from it. So you basically get a little marker that just says that oh, this is mine until it gets taken away by the opponent. So it doesn't count as a character for contesting, uh, but it is there. So if you, if you have a backfield objective or maybe in a far corner objective and you want to just hold it and then go away, you can do that. Um, as long as you know the opponent doesn't run in behind you, it's yours for the rest of the game until it's not. Um, which I think is really useful. I think it's brilliant. I think it's underutilized. I think we're going to see more of it as we go forward. I think it was just there was a big shiny toy. Oh, Magneto is, is definitely. It, yeah. It's, it's hard to be like, I'm using Magneto and Mystique. I'm going to use Mystique's leadership because, it, it, well, it's Magneto. Right? Like, he should be. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, I, I really like Mystique's, um, Mystique's leadership. Um, I think and it's definitely what we're trying to play, play yeah. a bit more with. I think if you're playing a lower threat game and you, you're like, I don't want to spend the sixth threat on Magneto, I'd rather take two, three threat characters, especially if we get some more Cabal members, <laughs> Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. Um, then, Agreed. not Cabal, I meant Brotherhood. Um, they're also Cabal, I think. Oh no, they're Avengers, aren't they? They're, they're Avengers. We think, we hope. Uh, I think Scarlet Witch is already confirmed for it. I, I, maybe not. Maybe not. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, Mystique's cool, and I like her leadership ability as well. Um, and I, I did play with it actually in the first game we tried it. Um, so they've then got Beast and Wolverine, which obviously aren't bad guys, but they are useful to have because they're both in. A, no, Wolverine's in both Avengers and Defenders, and obviously X Men. Mm -hmm. And Beast is in Avengers and X Men. So. I'm not, I don't want to talk about them too much because they're, they're good guys, but it, it, I mean, Beast, if you've got Beast the core has, set, if, you, if you've got the core set, the Brotherhood, uh, part of the Brotherhood before. Yeah, but he's obviously not in. He's not in the game. In, but. In the game, not, but yeah, I mean, it, it's two characters. You've got a, is Wolverine four threat or three threat? Um, Wolverine is four. Yeah, and Beast is three. So you've got a couple extra characters. So you, you can, you know, like there is no mix and, you know, there is no just evil and just good in this game. You can play whatever you want. This is just the way we've split it down is I wanted to talk about bad guys and Pat wanted to talk about good guys. Um, but Wolverine and Beast go quite well with the core set uh, in terms of your Avengers. So it's definitely not a bad, they're not bad characters to pick up um, if you've just got the core set and then what I've laid out here. Um, so jumping back to the core set quickly, you've got Crossbones, uh, Baron Zemo, um, Doc Ock, uh, Red Skull and Ultron. Ultron doesn't do anything. In from from the way I feel, he's in Cabal, but yeah, arguably he I think is the least popular character in the game currently. At the moment, I would alongside been. Black Widow three. Yeah, well Black Widow two, but three threat is what I meant. I knew. Um, I think those two are are the lowest taken characters currently. They were in, they were in the league, weren't they? They were the I lowest. think they were they were in this latest league, yeah, which is basically what I'm judging it on. Um, Baron Zemo is still a solid character in Cabal, and also I think he's in Criminal Syndicate. And uh, no, no, Cabal um, only Zemo. Oh, is he? He, he works quite well in Criminal Syndicate, though. Um, basically, he gives rerolls to anyone within a certain range, um, and he, he uh, <laughs> yeah, um, and he can he gets some work done. Like he's fast, he's a long mover. Um, I replaced him with Mystique basically in my Criminal Syndicate list because um, yeah. Mystique, I think does what I want a little bit better because she's also got stealth and can hide. Um, I know more options for you as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Crossbones is Criminal Syndicate. Um, he doesn't get a lot of play, but he definitely isn't bad. Like, he's he's probably underutilised. Um, he's, it's because he's a slow mover. Yeah, it's the, as long as we get more movement cards and as long as those movement cards are seen in place, so, you know, climbing gear, aim lackeys, that sort of thing, I think Crossbones is fine. He yeah, I think Crossbones is fine. He reduces damage. Out. Yeah, he will not go down, and he will put people down. Um, yeah, if they get close enough. If you get close enough, exactly. I think um, you just need to work around the fact that he's a slow mover. Yeah, um, absolutely. And then uh, Red Skull is a great leader um, for Cabal. I don't want to talk about him too much, because I can't use him all that much. But he's, he's good. He's got his movement shenanigans. Um, he can, he's got some good tactics cards from the core set that, that boost him up as well. Um, but... Oh, at this point, we're assuming you've kind of already bought the core set. But um, Doc Ock yeah. is actually a really useful character. Again, I think he's possibly a little bit underutilised because Spider Foes isn't that great in affiliation currently. Um, Agreed. And needs a bit of a boost. I mean, there are, lists. there are lists out there, um, but you have to work hard for it. <laughs> yeah, Whereas, yeah, I think uh, you're... I think you're, the other ones are as it, It's certainly not something you can play as a pure list currently and do like well with. You could win games, but I wouldn't say you could do well with it. Yeah. Because you've got four models currently. Um, Very cool. Very cool. So, yeah, um, that is what I would recommend um, to buy first. I agree. Um, yeah, I agree. The other option, and this is just one other option for bad guys, is you can go completely different. And this is, this is a three box purchase. Um, okay. This is, you buy the core set, then you forget mm -hmm. about the core set, people, because who cares? And then you buy Thanos, Corpus okay, and Proxima, yeah. Black Wolf and Ebony Moore. 
and you've got all the gems. So you can do a ten. A, you can do a ten roster just with that, with all the gems, Thanos. Um, it's going to cost you about the same as probably all five of these boxes, but I mean that's just Thanos, isn't it? It's pretty it's awesome. Just, like it's and, great. I got like, Thanos for Christmas, and it comes with an extra way of playing as well, which you can Thanos use your cool set. Yeah, you can use your core set to play this extra way of playing. Um, I definitely want to get around to doing that. Um, oh yeah, we need to play the ultimate encounters. Oh, we haven't actually done that yet. So. No, but um, yeah, I could see that happening too. But uh, I think you should just go down whichever route you like the characters of most. If you like the good guys, I think the ones I put out are pretty good. If you like the bad guys, I think the ones you put out are really smart. Um, but go where your heart takes you. Yeah, go with what characters you love at the end of the day, and then once you get into the game, then you can like make more informed decisions. But that's you know this is what we this is what we decided. Agreed. If we went back and did it all again, and we're just focusing on good or evil, this is what we would do. So, over to the last bit of the show now. Um, we are going to take a look at the latest um, reveal uh, for the next set of characters. We looked at Black Bolt in the last episode. His queen has arrived uh, with a full reveal. And I'm going to bring that up on the screen now, hopefully. Um... Here we have the Queen Medusa. of Atalan, Medusa. Uh, the Medusa Lith, Amaquilin, Boltagon. Um, awesome. Love it. Um, the, you know, one of the founding members of the Frightful Four, which I think yeah. she's probably most well known for. Uh, I'm going to go with no, but carry on. Introduced in 1961 as a fantastic four bag. <laughs> I'm not even going to go on. It's done. Right, let's look at the card. Yeah, <laughs> She's fantastic. the human queen. Um, go for it, Pat. You, you did so well on Vol oh. Black Bolt last week. Take it away. So let's start at the top. We have a four threat character. So one threat less than her husband. Um, she has six stamina on both sides, a medium mover, size two, with threes across the board and defences. So we're looking at here pretty i would say maybe just slightly below par for a four threat character with threes across the board um yeah you'd expect one six, four maybe yeah maybe one four but six stamina is pretty nice um, yeah 12 total is good 12 it's a good total we've got two attacks on both um i think i'm just going to state here uh nothing changes from one side to the other um she's yeah. one of those quite simple characters where cut exactly in half you know six threat either side everything stays the same it's a nice easy character to get your head around with the stat with the actual numbers and such um so the first attack we've got is a braid bash range three strength five cost of zero um with the whole after this attack is resolved this character gains uh power equal to the damage dealt um so that's a pretty good builder um but it additionally has a couple of extra rules so if this attack deals any damage and the target is size three or less after the attack is resolved this character may push the target character short so it's a nice little control piece um pushing people off target and um, off objectives um and size three covers you know, a good proportion of the characters in the game um but on a wild we get another ability so we get flurry um and after a wee bit of research um we did find out that this is the first card with fl or the first yeah attack with flurry that's free so on a builder all the other ones tend to cost cost power which i think is quite interesting um so on a wild you basically get to make the raid bash attack again um this attack does not have the flurry special so you can't just keep chaining them into each other that would be uh, a little bit silly but we have here a really good builder i think um which is yeah, good solid because i think she's going to be very power hungry um especially when we look at her next attack, which is an area two attack, seven power, um, with a cost of six. So this is a really powerful attack, um, or a really expensive attack, I should say. Six dice is obviously powerful in area two. Um, seven area dice. Oh, sorry, seven dice, correct. <laughs> um, get confused with the six cost seven dice. Um, area two is a good, good range. Um, before damage is dealt, if the target character is, say, three or less, place the target character within one of this character. So oh. she basically can drag people in 
So again, if Medusa's not on an objective, she wants to take someone off the objective, but for whatever reason can't use the braid bash or you know the throwaway won't be good enough she needs to bring them forward this here is a really cool attack and on unwild we get bleed and bleed is a, a condition which was around quite a lot at the beginning of the game a few of the core um core box characters have bleed but basically it means once you've activated that character after the activation they take damage um so it's an annoying one you basically always have to remember that you know, if you're going to daze, you probably want to shake it unless there's something more important to do. Um, but it's it's a good it's a good one, and with seven dice, I think it's it's pretty likely that this thing's going to go off. Um, oh yeah. I can't see when it will always be that useful to use split ends compared to braid bash. Um, uh, I've got one example in my head. Oh, hit me. You're playing gamma shelters. Okay. Your opponent's got like three models around like the middle gamma shelter. Yeah. You move her up to within just just within two of the gamma shelter. Okay. You use split ends and put all of them behind her so they're all out of range one or range two of the gamma shelter. So not only are they off the point, but they're also going to be taking a damage. I like it, Matthew. So potentially they could be bleeding out of the gamma shelter and obviously hopefully you've done some damage with the attack as well. But that's like the only like definite like this is when I would 100% yeah. use it if I've got the I six think it's power. Also good that you don't actually need to deal damage to be able to move. No, it's before, it's, before the damage is even dealt, you uh, chuck them. Yeah. So just lifting oh. them up over her head is, is, I imagine that's quite funny. So That's a really good point. I think you've um, you sold me on it. That's a definite good reason to use split ends. Um, fantastic. Um, Medusa has four superpowers. Well, she's got five but one of them is immunity to poison which it looks like quite a lot of well, both i think all of the inhumans are going to have that yeah i would agree um especially when looking at the terragenesis oh my crisis. god yes that just clicked yeah I, <laughs> oh my um, god how did oh so dumb never mind never mind um we also think all the inhumans are going to have the inhuman special rule like what the asgardians have the asgard special rule so it basically gives you a re-roll on either attack or defenses or both, I should say, um, but only one. So that's a little bit more forgiving for the threes across the board. It's almost like that fourth dice. Um, if you don't have to use the reroll, you've probably either rolled very well or you've rolled a ton of skulls and you can't reroll them, mm. um, <laughs> which we have seen happen. So the <laughs> other superpowers, um, I think, are slightly more interesting. Um, so the first um, active superpower we've got is hair flip. Um, so hair flip costs three power, uh, yeah. and what it does is you choose an enemy character of size three or less within three and throw it short. The superpower can only be used once per turn. I like so it. This, yeah, yeah, I think it's wicked. This is a throw which can only target characters. First um, one, I think. First one, I believe, yeah. So size three covers, like I said, a large proportion of the characters in the game. Within three, that's a decent range. Decent short, range. Decent, yeah. Short isn't great, but I think this is solid. I think three power, you're going to be trying to do this as much as possible. And really what we're seeing here uh, come together is a really nice control piece in Medusa. Like She is going to be an objective queen, knocking people off, bringing people in, moving her own characters, which is a little sneak peek onto her second ability, um, which is the Royal Decree. This is a... Another active superpower costs two power this time, so a little bit cheaper. You choose another allied character within two of this character, place this character within one of the chosen character, or place the chosen character within one of this character. A character can only be placed by the superpower once per turn. Now, it's interesting that it says a character can only be placed by the superpower once per turn, because what you can do is actually leapfrog your own character. So you can throw a character over you, and then throw herself over that character that you yep. just throw. It it's is power, power, you can do it. Yeah, it is for power, but particularly with large based characters such as Modok, Hulk, Ghost Rider, I think you're going to get a lot of movement shenanigans from Medusa here. Lockjaw. Uh, or uh, do we know what base size Lockjaw is? Is is he going to be a medium? Or I'm guessing. Uh, I think he looks like medium from the picture, but I might be wrong about that. Yeah, I actually haven't looked. That's a really good point. Um, but yeah, Lockjaw. Then um, I. I I think we can assume he's probably not a short base. He's at least a small base. He's you know, a big dog. He's a big dog. Exactly. I think this. I think this ability really makes the card. 
um, this will decree. Um, movement shenanigans are always good. Um, and really, adding extra movement to characters who might need it, who are slow movers, such as, you, you know, we're looking at Magneto on a large base, who's a slow yeah. mover, Kingpin, who's on a larger base, who's a slow mover. Um, yeah, even, even characters who are medium movers, you know, Hulk is going to get a good amount of use out of this. I, I think this is really cool. And just to get people onto objectives to be able to dish out the pain while Medusa whips her hair back and forth and knocks people off the objectives. I think it's brilliant. Um, and the final power, um, the final superpower is Living Strands. So this is um, exactly the same as Angela. Um, I think it's slightly less useful. Angela's is really useful because she's on that larger base. Medusa's on a, a regular oh, yeah. small base, so it isn't going to get quite as much use out of it. But basically what it means is when advancing or climbing, enemy characters cannot place the movement tool overlapping this character's base. Enemy characters cannot re-roll or change attack dice when targeting um, this character with attacks. That's the important bit as well. I think that's more important. I think the second part of that is, is the more important part for Medusa, I think. Um, not being able to re-roll or change the attack dice is, is going to really aid that survivability, I think, um, especially when we've got the, the six stamina. I think she's going to be a, a harder nut to crack than at first glance it may appear. Um, Medusa, Medusa what, was your, uh, what was your first instinct in that? What did you think? Um, sorry, I'm a bit crackly there, but I know what you said. Um, so uh, my first thought was what an awesome model this is because oh my god they have knocked it out of the park again with this model um i think it should go without saying actually with them <laughs> um, yeah they haven't yes. i don't yeah they've not really done any bad job but what what a great great model um so seeing the card however my first thought was um she is going to be an absolute nightmare to be up against um so many throws, pushes, uh, movement shenanigans. Um, it's bananas. Really. It's, it's 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 more than every everything you read is just more control. So like it's it was just it was, oh, like read the first attack. attack I was like, okay, decent decent attack. Oh, it's got flurry. Okay. Oh, and you can push the target. Um, if they're size three or less, I was like, all right, okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, you have got to deal damage, so there's not a guarantee. Oh, but it does get a flurry, so there is another chance of doing it. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Uh, good. I guess the one risk is that you try and attack, you get the flurry and choose not to push them, and then and don't do any fail. damage on the second attack. Um, yeah. And then be like, oh, a bugger. But I guess that depends on how greedy you get. Actually, Flurry, you don't have to. Oh wait, Flurry doesn't have to attack the same character. It's not like. Oh, no, no, Yeah, Flurry can target. Oh yeah. Really wicked. Really she just sits with objective. Yeah. Like so in just in push... Gamma, for example, you chose yeah, that yeah. example. Bump her into the middle one. And she's just going to be throwing people around like there's nobody's business. I, Absolutely. I'm so excited. Yeah, I think she is fragile. Um, I, uh, Living strands definitely helps with that. Like stops your opponent getting you know the rerolls, but. The three defences across the board is, you know, only average. And for a four threat, it's not, I would say, it's slightly below average. Mm -hmm. um, gets the re-rolls, though, as well. But, you know, she gets into trouble, royal decree, drag is someone else nearby to help her. Um, use hair flip, just throw the enemy away. It, there's so many ways she can just counteract. If you don't take her out quickly, I think she just she just deals with you. Um and obviously she gets the re-rolls anyway with the inhuman ability. So I, I don't really have anything negative to say about her, apart from that she's four threat. But I think she's, you know, I arguably, all, uh, if, if her defences were better, she would have to be five. But um, yeah. with, with her control abilities, four threat is, is even that, uh, it's almost underselling her. Yeah, I, I agree. I think she's at the upper echelon of what you can do for a four threat character. Um, yeah, she's, she's definitely um, a slightly higher end control, like uh, she's not an easy character to use. I think she would take a few games to get used to. Um, yeah, I agree. Another one of those sort of higher ceiling, uh, higher floor, higher ceiling characters. Yeah. Slightly yeah. harder to get your head around, but once you do, boy, oh boy, you're going to lose some games against Medusa. So there's going to be, there's gonna be that game games. where you where everything goes exactly right with her and she just wins you the game by herself. Yeah. 
yeah, I can't wait. And um, as someone who plays A-Force, we already know Medusa's going to be an A-Force. Um, so that power problem isn't going to be as much of a problem, hopefully. That's um, horrible. And I think whipping She-Hulk over herself oh, and God, She-Hulk yeah. being special delivery, it's just, oh, so much movement for She-Hulk. I don't even think you need special delivery if you're running Medusa. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, I think there's an argument to be had for that. I think it's... I think it's Oh, it's it's got me excited. The Medusa, this card did not. I think you could free. Yeah, I definitely think you could free up special delivery out of your roster if you if you're running Medusa. I think you would always make my eight. Oh yeah, no, I just meant the five. The five. The five. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. There are definitely some mission, uh, some crises where you're like, mm, this would be good because it's a free attack, but you know, Medusa will just you know whip her hair. Medusa with power is just going to be like, just come over here. That'd be great. Thanks. Agreed. Agreed. Um, yeah. So that is that is Medusa. Um, and um, very very quickly now at the end of the episode, um, AMG released a couple of little teasers. Uh, not yesterday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was Friday actually. I think it might be. It might be Saturday. Who cares? I think it was. It was, uh... it was some little teasers, and um, I'm just I just want to throw them up and just very very quickly. We're not going to spend too much time because it's. Uh, a slightly longer episode already. Um, yeah. <laughs> is uh, these two blurry images? Um, I, I cut out the taglines when I put them into this. Well, so. so the one on the left we have, our next release carries on a legacy of evil. Um, so what, what so do we I think, think for that one? I think we, we've had this discussion. I think we're thinking this is possibly sin. Uh, yeah, that would be my go-to. Uh, which is Red Skull's daughter, for those of you who don't know. Yeah, hence the uh, hence the legacy of evil continuation. Maybe a yeah. second second cabal leader, if the yeah. other one. If the other one isn't, or maybe they both are. Who who knows? But the second one, Pat. Um, you won't see her it. coming. You won't see her coming. Now this is slightly trickier. We got a katana and a, he looks like a gun, so. If it didn't have the gun, I would have gone with Psylocke. No, I don't think. So. I, I think and, and the, I think Psylocke's yeah. counted out because of the. There's there's a few things that don't, don't necessarily look right if it's Psylocke, but I think I'm I'm reasonably sure that is a gun. Yeah, I think it's a gun, and if it is, then my bets would be Madame Hydra. I think and I think what, I would definitely agree with you on that one. Yeah. Um, it might not be. It might, it may, you know, throw a curveball in there. Um, I mean, it, it could be even, you know, got other characters such as Typhoid Mary. It could be someone like yeah. that, um, who who I know in the comics has used both swords and guns. Um, so it could well be Typhoid Mary, but I don't know. I just got a sneaky suspicion that um, this one might be another Cabal leader in this, um, and yeah. with that being Madame, I think that would yeah. be nice. Yeah, I think one of them, but, one of them is definitely going to be a leader. If it is yeah. the two that we've said, um, yeah. if not both, Cabal is a big roster. It is a very big, uh, very big affiliation, and I yeah. think being the first one to get three leaders. And I think be... we'll soon see a new Avengers leader. So would I. Um, whether so it's I. Um, Falcon, Captain America, or whether it's um, you know no, someone it'll else, be, it'll be it'll be Falcon, Captain America, and I think the leadership or will be called some like all new avengers um yeah that's that's what he was the leader of so oh maybe you know maybe it'll be a new a new avengers affiliation probably not no. but yeah i think um, just... i think it'll just be straight into avengers and it'll be like uh, mystiques which is called the freedom force which is obviously a slightly split off part of the brotherhood um, yeah. and they've just named the leadership ability after it uh -huh. um but yeah no i i, I think what we've said is I want to say that's the most likely, but you know, obviously we don't know. Um, yep. and she will it is, a and, until we see anything else, it is just speculation. But love it. I think love we're, we're reasonably good guesses at that point. I would agree. Um, oh. well, we're so, looking, at, looking at oh, nearly two hours, Matt. Yeah, good. there's there's definitely some stuff to cut out of that. Um, so we'll we'll be fine there. Um, fine. I think I hopefully um, new players have got something out of it, and you know, hopefully other people um, agree with us about Medusa. I think she's a really exciting character, and um, 
let's wait and see what those extra reveals are from AMG with their blurry photos. Oh, yes. Hopefully, we'll get those next week. Uh, hopefully, we'll get Crystal and Lockjaw next week. Mm -hmm. um, and then the week after, we're going to get the models themselves. So, fingers crossed. Fingers so, thanks crossed. for watching, guys. Uh, this was MPC on MCP. Indeed. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back in uh, a week or so with another episode. Thanks for watching.